What's up, everybody? I'm Chris with Photo, and this is Geared Up. This is our weekly live broadcast where we talk about lighting, uh, techniques, uh, the science of it, gear, to have fun, and just kind of chat it up. Take your questions. We answer anything live right here, right now. Uh, I'm hanging out with Kate. Kate's over there. She's hey. going to be running all the stuff as usual, and she'll be in front of the camera uh, momentarily. But today, we're diving into absorption and reflection. Uh, something very, very cool, uh, something that I don't think people realize uh, is happening all the time and is integral to us seeing stuff. So let's jump into, uh, let's just start with absorption because I think that one's kind of, they're both really, really cool, but I, I kind of think some of the concepts behind absorption are, are really neat. So absorption is just what it says, light being absorbed. The cool thing about that is just because, and generally the thing that absorbs light for anyone who wonders would be your darker finishes, especially black, black absorbs a lot of it. And the cool thing about it is when that light is absorbed, it's never seen again as visible light. So it doesn't come back out as anything. Uh, the other thing that's cool about that is that that energy isn't lost. Like, so those, those photons and stuff like that, they're just converted into a different type of energy. Generally that energy is heat. So that, so, I, I think that is kind of awesome. So uh, the light comes in, it is absorbed. It never, ever, ever comes back out as light again uh, once it hits a black surface. And that is converted into, again, a different energy source. And that's how that energy continues on as we exist, right? So it's pretty cool. Uh, absorption can't be photographed. It's one of those things that you can really only see when you compare it to another photograph without the absorption itself, uh, just because, again, that light's being taken in. And then um, the absorption also is going to determine, you know, the, the color of things. Uh, the reflection is also gonna do that as well, but absorption plays a big part in the fact that it absorbs certain light waves. So the things that are reflected are the light waves or the colors that we see. It also has a lot to do with, um, you know, the saturations or, um, you know, how, how dark a color is, whether it's, you know, a black, a green, or a white. So cool stuff. So the other cool thing on the flip side is reflection, right? So the cool thing about reflection is most objects don't, almost all objects don't, ref, uh, don't create light. They don't emit light. So pretty much everything that you see is a reflection of light off of something. So what you're seeing me, I don't emit light. Uh, maybe I do, but, um, it's probably filled with hot air, but, uh, the, uh, because I don't emit light, what you see of me is just light reflecting off of me, which is kind of cool. So, um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's literally the, the opposite of what we were talking about too, how, um, you can't, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, we're going to, I, I digress. I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place today. So, but when it comes to uh, reflection and light modifiers themselves, we start to run into some problems uh, when it comes to the actual photography portion of these things. What's up? No, keep on talking. Oh, gotcha. Um, when it comes to the photography, por oh, it's my, it's yeah, my, sure. my laptop's all in the way. Oh yeah, we have like everything just right in the way. Perfect. So the tough thing about reflectors is that there are certain things that play a role in how you're able to reflect light back onto your subject. So, the, and the tough thing about a reflector is that it may uh, not give you enough output. Uh, the cool thing about that is you can do a couple of different things. You can um, change the finish. The finish is gonna have a lot to do with it. So we're working with a white finish here. Uh, it, the nice thing about a white finish, it's nice and subtle. It doesn't, uh, do anything other than kind of really like gently fill in the shadows. Whereas if you need a little more pop, a little more output, I don't have a silver on me, but I do have a sun silver. And you can see how much something like this highly reflective. So this is my sun silver one, it's a little gold, but you can see how something that's a little, a little higher reflectivity can start to kick up a little bit more light. You can see it's got a little more punch. I, I don't know. They, yeah, they can see that. Yeah. So you can, you can see how that's, 
how you have a little more working space with something that's a little more highly reflective on uh, the finish itself. So white's going to be a little more subtle, a little smoother. Uh, the your you know high reflective stuff like the silver, sun silver, gold, and stuff like that. What's up? Five meats is in the house. Oh, my man, <laughs> my man, three meats. Miguel Keelas is up in the house. What's up, brother? Hey. Um, uh, he actually has a good question for you. What's up, Miguel? Let's see. Uh, I'll pop it up on the screen. Question for you. In regards to the black surfaces and absorption, absorption, excuse me, is this why Profoto light shapers do not have black interior? Uh, I mean, it's for the most part. Uh, so he's asking. Um, he's asking uh, why Profoto doesn't use black in the interior. So what? There, that's not 100% true. So. Oh, okay. That's not 100 true. Let me let me grab a modifier. So just want to make sure I grab the right one. Um, Lucy says all surfaces matter. All surfaces matter. Yes, I like it, Luce. Yes. All right, cool. All right, here we go. So not 100 percent true, Miguel. So, but yes, there are certain modifiers that wouldn't make a lot of sense for it to be uh, black interior. Snoot, for example, is a black interior. Uh, I don't know if you can really see this. But you can see the inside of it is, uh, yeah, let's go here to the side because we have a lot of light over here. But the inside of your snoot is black. And that's because you don't, uh, so when the light comes out of the front of the snoot, you don't want it to be like shooting all over the place. So uh, just like we were talking about, so no light exists unto itself is kind of the, the whole idea behind it. So if a light is present, it is bouncing off of something or being absorbed by something, right? So if the inside of this uh, snoot was anything other than black, the light wouldn't come straight out of it, right? It would come out and would go this way and would go that way and that way. And it wouldn't give you that crisp, sharp line that you can get from a snoot. So by having the interior be black and having that energy absorbed, uh, you're getting more focused light out of the front of something like a snoot. Now, once you start jumping into things like reflectors and stuff like that, where you kind of need those reflections to change the direction, uh, especially as you zoom the reflector on the flash head, that's why this, those, those higher uh, output finishes matter. Um, but yes, we do have some modifiers with black interiors. So take that and, you know. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Boom, Miguel. Um, Marie? <laughs> Um, he says, I have a question for Profoto Connect for Leica. I have seen many reviews on the main dial saying it gets stuck because the materials have an issue. The Connect, the Connect Pro, someone's saying the Connect Pro dial is a little, uh, it can be a little bit tough. Uh, mine, I remember like off the jump, the, the rubber feel of it. Was, oh, mine's on my camera. What am I talking about? No, mine's on my camera. I can take it off. But uh yeah, it's got a little bit of um, force to it. It's, it's mostly so you're not accidentally bumping the dial and, and messing with your power settings. But if it's uncomfortably uh, hard to turn, then you should exchange that out and we should take care of that 100%. So, um, again, so we were talking about the actual materials of the uh, – modifier helping a lot with a lot of reflection. So again, your white finishes are going to give you a nice smooth, even cast of light of whatever it's bouncing back. Um, so the, the finish plays a big deal on it. And then again, same thing. If you flip over to the black side, it's going to do quite the opposite. It's going to take the light away. And we'll show you that here. Uh, kind of the, the, the image we're going to take is going to be a little more subtle, but it harkens back to what I said earlier when we were talking about absorption in which you can't photograph absorption. You can only compare it to something that doesn't have the absorption in it. So we're going to take uh, three images. We'll take one with nothing, then with a the reflection, and then with the absorption side of the uh, the negative fill side of the uh, reflector and show you that kind of cool stuff. So, um, so again, we talk, that was finishes. So white smooth, your silvers, your golds, your sun silvers, a little punchier. They're going to give you a touch more working distance because that's the next thing that plays a factor in how the reflector works on your subject is going to be the distance. So the cool thing about it is you can actually adjust the power or the amount of fill you get by playing with the distance of your reflector in relationship to your subject. So the nice thing about that is if you want a little bit more, you can raise it up as long as it's not, I, I'm, as, long, as long as it's not within your frame. We'll talk about that for a split second here uh, as we're carrying on. But you can raise it up a little bit more for a little more power. You can bring it down for a little bit less fill. So your distance is going to play a big role too. So your finish, 
your distance, and as well as your angle. So the nice thing about the white sides of the uh, reflectors, again, being really smooth and not so pointed, uh, this kind of goes... Uh, the same thing when we talk about umbrellas. So the nice thing is, is you have a lot more play in the angle at which you have the reflector facing your subject, right? So the best possible setup for your reflector is going to be quite going to be the opposite of your uh, light source, right? So if my light's coming from this direction, having the reflector here to bounce back, that's going to be the best. So. The nice thing is, is you can play with that angle. You can feather a little bit more and either add more fill or negative fill or reduce the fill or negative fill. So finish, distance, and angle are the big three components there. So where reflectors can kind of not be awesome, because I, I try to make sure that you know the downsides as well as the upsides. So where reflectors can be less helpful is if you're starting to work at wider angles of, or if you're starting to cover more of your subject, right? So, you know, maybe like a tighter beauty shot or a headshot or something like that. The nice thing is you can kind of keep this here and right out of the frame, right? But if you start to back up and you're going for like maybe half body or three quarter length or even full body, you know, you're gonna have to continuously change the distance of the reflector against your subject. And when you do that, you're reducing the output. So at a point, this may not be enough, right? So this where at the point that you're starting to shoot maybe some more full body stuff, uh, you, want, you want to either change your finish to something a little more highly reflective or instead of going with the bounce or uh, actually shooting a light into this thing and getting some more uh, light broadcast out of it. So something to remember with the reflectors, at a point they do start losing enough energy that they don't really help anymore. So cool stuff. Cool. Uh, like I said, I think, I think the, the science of it all is super geeky and fun. Uh, I, love the, I love the whole uh, light is gathered in by the absorbing material and it doesn't go away. It just never is light again. So I think that's kind of, that's kind of fun. So, um, you ready, for ready to rock and roll? Yeah. Let's do it. So we're going to take three shots of Kate, uh, and we'll compare them side by side. And if you have any questions again, please ask, uh, we, and we'll be chatting. We can talk about anything, but hopefully mostly about reflection and absorption. Uh, so we're gonna take three shots. We'll take one with nothing, just a, kind of a, a baseline shot. Uh, we'll be taking a shot with the negative fill and we'll be taking a shot with the um, the reflector. Uh, for light setup, you can't really see it. Uh, it is even on any of the shots because I have it actually set back pretty far. Uh, I did that because I want uh, the distance and the coverage. And it kind of has to do with the inverse square law. We can talk about that a different day if you'd like to. But my light is probably... I'm right here. 14 feet from you, 10 to 14 feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably like 10, 10 to 14 feet. 13, just to... 13 for funsies. Okay, so say we're, we're roughly 13 feet away from Kate from the light. She is roughly six feet from the background. Six, yeah. Yeah, she's roughly six feet from the background, so we have some, some working distance. And the light's backed up far enough that um, it will also hit the background in a nice even form. So uh, it's a one light setup, really, really simple. Uh, camera setup wise, for anyone who wants to know, it's a uh, Fuji GFX 100S. Settings are ISO 100, uh, F11. I needed F11 today. Uh, my video lights are popping. And uh, ISO 100, oh, 125th of a second. That's my highest sync speed before I go into high speed sync. And that's not where I want to be today, so. Let's get back up here. All right, feel free to pop in questions. I'll yeah, and we'll check those out here in a second. Check it out in a second. Cool. So here's the first shot of Kate coming up. You ready to rock and roll? So let's make sure we have you centered up. There we go. Three, two, one. Perfect. So that's the baseline shot of Kate. That's no reflection, no absorption. Uh, it'll pop up here in a second. There it is. That's the one we just took. So cool. So I'm gonna bring out my, ref I was I would use a reflector holder, but I don't wanna block this, the thing for too long. So I'm gonna pull up my handy dandy remote control app, you ready to go? So I'm gonna try to be, I'm not gonna be nifty about this. It's not gonna work yeah. the way that I want it to. I'm trying to be all handy. Here we go, three, two, one. There we go, to the reflected side. 
three, two, one. Very cool. So what did you just do? So um, the first shot that we took, where am I at? I'm talking to you my, my, with my back. So that first shot was uh, just the baseline with nothing there. Second shot was negative fill. Uh, third shot was uh, normal fill with the white coverage. Uh, you know what? I could do it just for fun, even though it's going to throw the color balance off, just so you can see how much more reflective it is. Yeah, I was going to set that one down. It's going to throw the color balance off a little bit. You'll see it. It'll, it'll warm up a touch on her uh, on her opposite side from the light. Yeah, yeah it's going to warm it up. It's going to be like a summer day. <laughs> but the cool thing about Sun Silver is it's subtle. It's not too gold, and that's, that's what's nice. It's got a gold and silver kind of weaved in between it. So, sick. Um, let's pull up these images and we can compare them. Oh, I'm going to, there's so many cables, so many cables. Give me that. I'm sorry it says Facebook users. I can't have it. It says pro photo reflectors are kick ass. They're oh, awesome. I'm glad that you said, I'm glad that you said, yeah. all right, before we compare this, because again, in me losing my train of thought earlier, I forgot to say this. So now the cool thing about reflectors is they're not, they're not crazy expensive. So the cool thing about going with an actual dedicated reflector, especially something like from Profoto, is we have, uh, they fold up really, really easy. So um, let's just do a quick reflector lesson too before we actually get into the comparison. That's fine. Uh, but a quick compare, uh, uh, reflector lesson. So if you want to fold your reflector up, if you just fold it into a taco like this and then twist it, you're done. That's how you fold up a reflector. So you diagonal, fold it like a taco, twist it and you're done. That's how you do it. And then it goes into a nice bag. You want to open it up, you just flick it to the side, you look like a magician. Um, but the nice thing about going with something like a dedicated reflector, something that's made for this stuff is the materials are made to be um, resistant to a lot of things. Uh, they can handle, uh, they, you know, it's, they don't really yellow. I mean, I've dirtied up my, see my sun silver had for forever. So you can see like I've beat it up. I've gotten dirt all over it from out there, but the actual material is not yellowed, which is kind of dope. Um, that's my personal sun silver when I've used the heck out of it. Okay, so um, Jose is asking one question. Do the reflectors have different color temperatures? I have one that bounces is so bluish. I stopped using it. So silver generally, um, silver generally, I don't know that they have a specific color temperature. i I could look into the um, I could look onto the the spec page of the site and see if they have a specific color temperature. But a lot of the times, the color that is broadcast back is the same color that it's given. Uh, and until you start messing with gold, then that obviously broadcasts back gold. Um, the silver sides of reflectors because they're so reflective can give off the feeling of coolness of, of, of a cold reflector, but generally they're just reflecting what they're giving, what they're given, unless the material itself is an actual color. So straight silver, like silver and white, they should reflect back what they're given. Just the silver is going to do it at a higher concentrated output because it's so reflective. It's so efficient. And the white is just going to be a little more smooth. So, uh, unless a reflector that you had again was, it was damaged or some sort or something happened with the silver, uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't reflect back super cold. It's probably just that it's so reflective that it's giving you that sensation. Uh, and you could, again, you could adjust that by feathering it off a little bit more, or you could back it away a little bit and that'll, that'll get rid of some of that punchiness of the silver. Um, but the cool thing about going with something like a dedicated reflector is one with the Profoto ones, you have handles, which are nice. You can kind of hang on to them really good. Uh, the, they're really rigid. Like I said, I've beat the absolute mess. I've had that one for eight years, I think. I've definitely had it as long as I, I've been with Profoto. Um, I don't think so. And I've been with Profoto like nine years. Yeah. Oh, it's that one right there. Uh, that one right there. It's down there, it's down there in the corner somewhere. Uh, the Sun Silver one that I, that I use on Kate. But it's, it's still ticking. So you can go that route. But if you're on a budget crunch, sometimes you are. Or you forgot your reflector, which happens. I forget stuff all the time for shoots. Um, you can go get a poster board, right? They make black poster boards. They make white poster boards. Yeah. Go get a poster board. Um, the downside is they're flimsier. Uh, they're harder to control. 
um, they tear the website is cheap. So you can you can decide for yourself what you want. Uh, the upside for going with a dead, like a pro photo reflector is the finishes are consistent. Uh, you know what you're gonna get every single time. So something to think about there. So now that you, was it Jose who said that? Yes. Um, now that Jose reminded me of the train tracks that I derailed from earlier, we're back. So <laughs> let's go to the baseline shot. Let's go full screen. And let's bring up, let's, let's tell this OneDrive to go away. So let's go, uh, you know what, let's do, let's do two at a time. So on, this is the baseline shot of Kate right here. And then this is the, um, the negative fill shot of Kate. And if you look here along her arm and her cheekbone, so you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. So there's a little highlight right here on her cheekbone from some of the reflection bouncing around the room. Again, like I said, no light exists unto itself. So the light is gonna hit stuff, it's gonna bounce off of stuff, it's going to broadcast highlights here and there. But we bring in the negative fill, that highlight drops drastically. And you can actually, you actually start to get a lot more shadow over here on this side. Over here on the arm, it starts to, um, start to drop off a lot faster than it did over here. So it's very cool stuff. Again, you can't just see absorption, but when you compare absorption to something that doesn't have that absorption, then it starts to become more pronounced. And then whenever you add in um, your reflector shot, so this is the white side of the reflector, you can see how much that changes here. So this is the normal baseline shot again, comparing that arm and the side of the face, because this is the side that we're working on with that. And look how much more filled in that is. So there's much less shadowing, it feathers off quite a bit, and then there's more information over here on this cheekbone. So you can do a lot, you can change an image a lot just by adding in some sort of fill or negative fill. And then like we were talking about with something that's got the, the punch of the gold, now that you start to see here, let's actually just do this. Let's do, let's get rid of the negative fill. Since we're just talking about fill at this point. So now that uh, now if this was the silver side, it wouldn't be so warm. Uh, if I've had a silver reflector for this, it wouldn't be so warm. But you can see now how much more that Efficiency has brought more light into the shot, more light over here onto the side of her face. You can see the shadow here that the light is um, creating under her chin is starting to fill in quite a bit more. So again, reflection absorption, very, very cool things. Uh, and again, you don't have to, you know, you can, you can play with how much something is um, being absorbed or being added to or taken away uh, just with, a simple little light shaping tool like this. I mean, it's kind of awesome. So hopefully you got some cool information. Is I anybody, yeah, I was, about to, I was about to say, let's check for some questions. Um, so, sorry, it says Facebook user, I don't your name. Yeah, our know. system for some reason on okay. Facebook won't tell us your name, it's, yeah, it's funny. Sorry about that. Um, but is there a considerable advantage, I'm gonna pop it on the screen, to using a U-curved reflector as um, compared to a normal flat reflector? So a U-curve reflector is going to, it's like a parabola. It's gonna like, it's gonna take the light from lots of places and point it back towards um, a fixed point, a fixed location. So in theory, yes, I mean, you're, you're shooting light down and it's grabbing it and it's sending it all back to the same, to the, like the, the same destination at the end. Um, Downside for something like that is that if, you, if you're okay with the funky catch lights, it's a funky catch light. Uh, it's a little unnatural. Whereas um, something like this, um, if you're just walking around in life in general, um, most of the stuff that you see, like say you're walking around the streets of New York City, right? You don't see you know natural reflections like this. So you know, you'll see the light's coming down and it's hitting the, the gray sidewalk and it's bouncing back up. You're more likely to see catch lights like this from underneath than you are something like this. So this right, so like, you know, like that kind of like uh, curved shape. If you're cool with it, I mean, it, it does what it's supposed to do. It grabs light and it, it shoots it back to a point, but it's a touch unnatural. Uh, if you like it, sweet. Uh, if you don't, this is more like what our, 
eyeballs are used to seeing. That's why like, you know, for portraits, people generally tend to like octoboxes and round things from above because visually for us, the sun is round and that has always broadcast that light. Those are the catch lights that we're used to. They're just kind of baked into uh, our DNA. I've got another question. So hopefully it makes sense. What's up? Yeah. Okay. Would a large reflector be enough to cover the entire person with light? How directional is the light? So the, so the directionality, so would a large reflector cover a person? I, I have a bigger reflector. So this is our large size reflector right here. It depends. Um, it depends on how big the light, I guess it doesn't have to actually depend on how big the light source is. It just depends on how much light you're getting. But yeah, I mean, in theory, you could do some pretty good work with a large reflector. I mean, this is almost as, I mean, it's three quarters my height. So I don't know if that's me calling myself really short or what, but um, <laughs> probably. But you could, you could definitely use a reflector. There's, there's huge ones out there. I've got, um, I've got reflectors that go on huge, like eight by eight and, and 12 by 12 frames. So you hundred percent could use a reflector that's big enough to cover a person's whole body. It just depends on how big of a, a, a something you will work with. Like when Kate and I break those things out, like, yeah, it's, it takes up a lot of space and, and we need it for a specific purpose. You want to take a picture with that one? Um, yeah, I could, I could, I could take a, a shot with this one. Uh, yeah, let's take a shot with this one and let's do a comparison of the small white and the large white. So you can kind of see the difference. That's a good, that's a good point. So let's, I'm pretty much braiding all of my tether cables and camera cables and everything together under this light stand as I move it. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. I'm saying I'm definitely gonna knock something over. Let's not do that today. We, uh, I think we already told them about the the camera going in the water a couple weeks ago. So I think I'm good with one loss for this year. Cool. So let's. So let me pull up. Let me just get you in the frame, and then I'm gonna open up my camera controller app, and then I'll, I'll hold them up manually. So come forward into your spot. Right on. Yeah. Let's. Get you centered up. Cool. Cool. There we go. Make sure you're there. I am five seven. You are five seven. <laughs> this reflector is this. It's it's yeah. You know, it's three quarters of your body. Yeah. Here we go. So. You want nothing? I just want to get you in the frame really fast. Get you focused, and then um, I'll hold them up with my hands. Cool. Here we go. Let's go with the baseline again. Three, two, one. Perfect. So hold that. Let's go with the there we are. remote. So let's go with the large reflector. Since it was on the top, I'm going to try to keep it. There we go. Full body. Three, two, one. Large reflector. And then. Let's go small reflector. Three, two, one. I tried to angle it too. I don't know if anyone saw, but I tried to, just like we were talking about with the things. So like this would be flat to her. I tried to angle it, um, definitely in the way, but I tried to angle it back a little bit just so it would catch more of that light. Cause again, like what we were talking about, the angle matters. So let's see. Right, let's see. Let's see. So again, our baseline shot was this one, no reflection. Then we go full body reflector, and then we go with, yeah. And so there you go. That's a huge difference. If, you, if you're looking at the, um, I'm not in the image right there, but if you look at the shots, so again, baseline shot. So here's the natural shadowing that's over here on this side. Full, so the, the larger um, reflector is here and look at the difference on her arm, top to bottom. Totally filled in here, whereas we still have quite a bit of shadowing here because in the uh, with this shot, the reflector stops about right here because I'm trying to make sure that I also have enough up here to reflect back towards her face. So it's the rest of it stopping about right here, whereas the larger reflector, we know just by holding it up is, still got enough space to get down to closely to her, almost to her knee section. And we're mid thigh right here. So, uh, yes, the size of the reflector is going to make a difference in the coverage of your model. So hopefully that helps. Sweet. Um, any other questions? Uh, I don't see anything. This is super fun. Again, uh, I like to nerd out about things like, uh, 
or just lighting in general, but uh, I thought that it would be fun to share uh, some of the uh, absorption stuff. Again, I just think that's kind of awesome. So again, um, absorption takes light away, reflection reflects light. It's cha- it can, it's a simple concept that can really help you sculpt your light uh, to do so. so like if we wanted to, we're not going to, we've already taken a bunch of photos, but you could use it to, you could sandwich your model between a couple of the, the black cards and take away all the extra light and really carve up some cheekbones, really, really good for beauty work uh, or headshots. I use it a lot with my headshots. So you can use uh, the ideas of these to mold and craft the light to look exactly like what you want to look like. Any other questions before we peace out? I just want to make sure we're good. Good, good, good. Cool. Yeah. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Uh, this is super fun. We will be back next Tuesday for another Geared Up. So in the meantime, hope you have an awesome week. Peace out, everybody. See ya. Peace.